various locations via the miracle of Skype, it's the 40th anniversary season of the LTN Hour. Let's Talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailey, co-hosts Brian Schmidt, P.J. Noodleman, and producer Dangerous Dan Margetta. Call the show anytime at 414-421-7901. And now, the creator and host of the Fastest Hour in Radio, Todd Bailing. Well, all that crap about it's uh, not, we don't get enough rain anymore. It must be global warming. Well, now we're getting too much rain. That must be global warming, too. Well, the global racing universe is looking at two different locations today. They're looking at Indianapolis for qualifying, and they're looking at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, where tonight the NASCAR All-Star Race will happen. Hello there. I'm Todd Bailing in Greendale, Wisconsin. I had to check where I was. I, I, you know, I kind of am all over <laughs> the place. Uh, joined by my uh, partners, beginning with uh, Brian Schmidt, who's in beautiful Ootsburg, Wisconsin. Hi, Brian. Morning. Yes, and it is beautiful out. This is like summer. This is, it is. This is great, and it's not raining here, so it's outstanding. Great day for a race. We'll be heading for Slinger this afternoon. Uh, also, uh, P.J. Noodleman, who is in Trempolo, Wisconsin. Hi, P.J. Hello, hello. Grateful for the weather and that uh, people are getting their races in. And <laughs> Well, and except is... for North Wilkesboro. Yeah, that's that's another thing. Five inches in 90 minutes. Uh, our producer director, Dan Margetta, is also our engineer today as... Matt Losey has the the week off, and uh, Dan's going to have his hands full, but you're doing a great job so far, Dan. Well, we got off the ground. We're in the air and flying, and that's the hard part. Uh, yeah, we're in Waterford today at the studio. Going to head out of here and go straight to Slinger for the races, so it'll be a pretty busy day. It will. It's a great day for uh, qualifying. Gets under underway at noon today at Slinger, and the racing at or shortly after noon, uh, at two o'clock start time at Slinger. And that means if you're going to Slinger, uh, you should be home in time to see the All Star Race tonight. It's televised on FS1. Uh, there is a an open the uh, call it a qualifier, but the top two from the open. Um, will advance to the big show. That gets underway a little after uh, 4.30 this afternoon. Um, and then, of course, the All-Star Race, 7.08 green flag tonight. Um, two cars from the Open and one from the fan vote. Last year, Noah Gregson uh, won the fan vote and moved on. But, uh, my goodness, it, they've had such a, a, a time of it. It wasn't enough that we have a big event with a brand-new paved job at North Wilkesboro. But um, I mentioned all that uh, rain. It it came right in the middle of the truck race, which will resume this morning. The trucks had a; they just sat in the infield, and as the water rose and rose and rose, they said there were places, and I can't imagine because it's on a little bit of a a hill. Uh, it's waist high water. They must have a wonderful drainage program. They must have got for their eighteen million dollar in public funds that it took to redo this place. Um, but uh, the trucks standing in water is a new concern. Um, you know, electrical systems on trucks or cars—they're mm-hmm. very sensitive to water. And, Vehicles uh, and water don't go hand in hand. We'll just put it that no, way. No. No. Nope. So I, I don't know if um, you know if they they could see the water coming and they moved the trucks to higher ground. Was there any real higher ground in the infield at North Worksboro? I'm not sure, but um, the, the, so much uh, has to uh, uh, do with whether we can get this place dried out. Apparently, it's still scheduled to to resume this morning, and of course uh, the All Star Race tonight. So, oh by the way, the forecast. For the greater metropolitan North Wilkesboro area is for mid-70s with a 15% chance. Listen, after about 110% chance yesterday, mm-hmm. that 15 is looking pretty good. So um, um, they, they should uh, get racing in today, which is what we care about. Um, they had a qualifying, three laps, and a pit stop. And uh, Joey Logano was the uh, fastest. It was supposed to be 
for heat races, but those were rained out. It will be for the feature. Um, and uh, in the meantime, the open lineup is by points because, I don't know, Brian, they didn't qualify those cars too, did they, for the same format? I think they were supposed to qualify, but that got rained out. So <clears throat> they kind of did everything in the order of importance, and yesterday morning they were at least able to get the – all-star race guys qualified Friday. They were supposed to do a lot of that and that rain on Friday as well. So that's, that's when I believe the open qualifying cup qualifying truck qualifying, all that was supposed to happen on Friday. All that got washed out. Um, they did have the pit crew competition where you came in, they changed four tires uh, under uh, the clock. Um, the uh, pit crew for the number 20 car of Christopher bell won the pit crew competition last year it was won by the number 54 crew uh ty gibbs crew it's the same group of guys they switched pit crews and now they're over at <clears throat> bell's car um geez did they check with ty before they took his crew away i mean i think he is remember that the 20 car was in the playoffs and in the championship four last year so that switcheroo uh -huh. may have happened right before that Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, well, that, um, in the meantime, that competition, what exactly did the, comp the pit crew competition uh, earn for the driver or the team? Well, that was part of the qualifying for the all-star race itself. So you go out, you made one lap, then you came in, did your pit stop, and then you went out and made another lap to the checkered flag. That entire time is what they use to determine the starting lineup for the 17 cars in the all-star race. So they kind of just threw that as part of the pit crew competition in there. So you're kind of doing two things at once. Oh. And that's how they determined. I mean, Kyle Busch's crew at one point had the fastest lap. However, Kyle sped on pit road. Any kind huh. of penalty you have there was a 10-second penalty, so that put him behind. So basically it was, this is the true team atmosphere of it because unlike normal pit crew competitions where the driver didn't have any part of it, he actually did because he couldn't speed, he couldn't do these things, ran a lap. So it was, it, this was a true test of your entire team to see who was the best of the of the 17 cars that were in the all-star race. So you might say to yourself, well, then what, what good is it being the number one pit crew? I uh, well, correct me if it, I'm wrong, it, but it's, it has to do with uh, pit selection. Pit selection. And, and now that they didn't run heat races, that starting lineup is being determined by how you qualified yesterday with your pit crew pit stop as part of it. So you earned your, your driver, the pole and you know, last year's race, Kyle Larson ran away from it from the pole. We certainly hope that doesn't happen today, yeah. but the guys I'm sure are thinking, hey, if we start up front, we, we may be in good shape. Pretty racy uh, track now that it's been repaved. Joey Logano from the pole, and the winner of the pit crew competition, the 20 team, starts third on the field today. So uh, if you're confused, every year they throw new curveballs at us that are designed for the only reason just to confuse everybody and say, well, it's the all-star race. <laughs> it's the rules of the year this year, and who knows. Um, but it will be on Fox Sports 1 today, and uh, and uh, good for all of us that we get to see it because uh, after Slinger, there's going to be plenty of time to get home. Now, <clears throat> there. Speaking of confusing things to deal with, they have three different tires that they can use. One will have red, raised red letters, raised white letters, or raised yellow letters. Yeah, pretty crazy. We'll talk about those when we come back. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs, all backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive 
Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need. With fresh mulch arriving daily, from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Hero, the Conocino follows. He got to the dot and tried to tuck it in. He scored! Oh, yeah! After dropping game one of the Central Division Finals Wednesday night, the Milwaukee Admirals will host Grand Rapids in game two Monday. Locked in front off his own man. The rebound, they score! Three game coverage starts at 6.30, face off at 7. I heart radio! Welcome back to uh, LTN. Glad you could join us. We had some uh, some bad news uh, this week. Um, and by the way, as far as those tires go, um, we'll talk about that a little later in the program. Um, if uh, you missed it, the uh, you may have seen or may not. You may know the name and you might not. Eddie Gossage. He was the president of Texas Motor Speedway. He was the first president the track had. He started his job in 1996. He was promoted from his job. Uh, he was working at uh, uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway and uh, got a promotion to take over um, at uh, Texas when it became uh, uh, the newest at that time track on the Cup circuit. But Eddie Gossage lived and worked in Milwaukee in the mid-80s. And uh, joining me right now, an old friend of this program, Tom Roberts, uh, from uh, what was called at the time TRPR, and uh, Tom <laughs> Roberts these days known as the uh, the head guy over at the <clears throat> Kowicki Driver Development Program. But um, Tom's start in NASCAR came uh, through Eddie Gossage. First of all, Tom, uh, great to have you, and sorry it had to be under such crappy circumstances. Well, Todd, it's always a pleasure to join you, and you're right. Uh, you know, heavy hearts uh, prevailed this uh, this week for sure. Eddie, Eddie for me, was, uh, was more than just one of my best friends. He was a mentor, and I really owed so much for him, uh, to him, uh, actually for, uh, for my career overall. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, back in the day, as they like to say, uh, mm. I had, um, I had gotten fired at Nashville the first time. Okay. And I, this would have been 79 or so. And I, I was able to go back and, get my job back and a raise and everything at, at Atlanta. Well, in the meantime, Eddie had graduated from MTSU, and he had grown up in the Nashville area and just absolutely loved uh, as a fan going out to the fairgrounds and seeing the racing and everything. So he had gotten his degree, and he had gotten a job uh, at Nashville. And when, uh, when Gary Baker wound up buying Lanny Hester out, well, then – Gary reached out to me in, uh, in Atlanta and asked if I wanted to come on board, move back to Nashville. We were going to have a weekly show. We are going to have ASA All-Pro, and then we were actually, uh, you know, the two cup races and the All-American 400. So I, mm -hmm. I jumped at that opportunity, and what happened was I moved back to Nashville, and then Eddie moved over to Bristol because uh, – uh, Gary was uh, had the lease or owned both uh, racetracks and operating both racetracks uh, mm -hmm. at that time. Well, then the rest of the story is that <clears throat> in 1983, uh, at the end of the 83 season, uh, Eddie had the chance, the opportunity to move to, as you said, move to Milwaukee and take over uh the motorsports, all of we had, you know, back in the day, you remember, we had Indy cars. We had, we even had unlimited hydroplanes. We had sports cars. This was the Miller car. Brewing Company. That is correct. And, and, uh, it, things just happened in like in crazy fashion, but it was meant to be. And that Warner Hodge had been taken over the, the track, had bought Gary out at Nashville. So when Eddie moved, to take the position at Miller, 
he needed a PR person for his NASCAR program. So the timing was just perfect for me because I was not happy at the track in, in Nashville. So he offered me the job uh, to come on board and uh, and do the NASCAR PR uh, for Miller Brewing. Of course, aligning me with Bobby Allison for the 1984 season, and then the rest is pretty much history because I did that. You know, I was Miller's guy pretty much for about a part of 20 years. And uh, it was such a fun time uh, on the racing beat back then. You know, you and I actually go back to, I guess it was like 85 or so when I was working with B.A. when you broke the big story <clears throat> of of his split with Iguard Racing. Jeez. Think about that. We're, we're, we're talking 40 years ago. Uh, yeah. Pretty amazing. Now, now uh, Eddie Gossage, in the meantime... Um, took the opportunity after working at Miller for several years to go back and get back into the racing end of it and went to Charlotte. That's correct. And, uh, you know, of course, learned so much under, uh, under Humpy Wheeler. Uh, but Eddie was a showman and Eddie was uh, an idea man, which, you know, we, we certainly, uh, enjoyed, uh, that aspect that he brought to the table for all of the, um, you know, all of the involvement that Miller had in motorsports. So a lot of people don't even remember that we we had the Miller Motorsports Awards of Excellence and in memory of Russ Catlin, and that was that was uh, that was Eddie's big deal to uh, you know to salute. Uh, media folks and, and their outstanding uh, work during the course of the year. There's, <laughs> I have to chuckle because there's, there's probably there's quite a few media people, such as our our buddy uh, Matthew Dillner. There are a lot of guys that are walking around that have Rolex watches, and I, I don't even know if they would even think that um, that was due to Eddie Gossage. Uh, I believe back in the uh, day. Dave Coleman yeah. is one of those with the Rolex. I believe you're. Next. I think you are correct too uh, on but that. Eddie but anyhow, stay, yes, oh, Eddie did go back to to Charlotte, and uh, I guess you could say he's he honed his skills there, uh, which put him in a really good spot to move on to Texas and you know be be Bruton Smith's guy out there. And, and what a tremendous job he did at Texas Motor Speedway. And uh, I thought it was a little different. Um, something didn't add up to me when I read um, that Eddie retired at age 62 and I was I was very confused. Um, I, we remain friends on Facebook like many people keep in touch, but um, I never really knew why he retired at age 62, but it turns out he had a lot to deal with. Yeah, but, I, you know, I, I don't think that, that health was into play at that time. I, I really think that it was a situation that, you know, with, uh, with more or less with Bruton on the way out, uh, as far as leading the charge for Speedway mm-hmm. Motorsports, and, and Marcus coming in into power, I think that Eddie Eddie was always a brutal guy, and I don't think that he real he he thought that he, he could really, uh, uh, you know, uh. maintain that kind of leadership uh, under under Marcus. And also, you got to also re- remember, our sport itself had reached a pinnacle, and, and you know the the crowd. It was it was a trying time from a promotion standpoint, you know. Eddie packed the stands and packed the stands for all the events that were out there. Well, it was just a state of, uh, I guess you could say, the sport and in, in, in general that it was it was a little bit on a downslide. And uh, you know, yeah, I, I think he that probably that picked a good the, time to retire. Yes, yes, yes. And, and uh, uh, shortly you know, after he retired, I take it he found out uh, that he had cancer. He <clears throat> he. He kept me in the loop uh, over the uh, over the winter months. He, he said that he he and Melinda knew that you know the chances of it returning uh, were great, and it did. And he was bound to determine uh, to beat it. We had uh, we the KDDP had just uh, 
we hadn't really announced it, but we had put him in a position where he was going to be uh, an official board member for our organization. And as a matter of fact, uh, he did call in for for the board meeting that we had via Zoom back, I think it was like April the 2nd. And he and I were back and forth, and, you know, I was trying to coach him on, and he said he was going to beat it, and uh, that he looked forward to, you know, having a more active part uh, in promoting and helping with the KDDP. But uh, my last text to him was uh, a week ago Friday, and um, when he didn't respond, uh, mm. you know, I sort of knew that, that something was going on, and then I got the message from uh, Melinda via text um, passed. the other day. It has been for the trying deal, but you know he, he was such a great guy. Uh, still relatively young, sixty-five. You know, cancer took my wife at fifty-eight years of age. Mm -hmm. I've often said, you know, uh, there's truly only one thing uh, on this earth that I hate, and that's cancer. Uh, you're not the only one, Tom. Um, listen, I appreciate you taking a little time and, and chatting with us. I wanted to talk a little more about the Kawiki program, but we're a little short on time. Uh, I hope to have you in the very near future, and you can catch us up on how things are going there. Absolutely. One thing, though, Todd, I just want to call attention that this Tuesday, the 21st, can you believe this, that it's the 10th anniversary of the KDDP? Oh. Ten years. I tell you what, have me back on. We'll talk about that. And I certainly look forward to seeing you uh, up there for the Slinger Nationals. Sounds good, Tom. Tom Roberts of TRPR and the KDDP. That's a lot of letters. Tom, we love you. We'll talk to you in the near future. And we'll take a break. We'll be right back. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B &B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need with Miller's Sales and Service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Love it. Embrace it. Right now. The, the, the Dan Patrick Show. Dan Patrick. Oh. Referees. They said it's a fact and it's a proven fact that you get more calls at home. Any coach complaining about the officiating over the weekend felt like that's what everybody was doing prior to the weekend. Rick Carlisle, okay. Now, if I'm Rick Carlisle, like, don't stop. <laughs> like, you won. Don't stop. The Dan Patrick Show. Dan and the Danettes and you. Weekday mornings 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Uh, before we were lucky enough to have Tom Roberts on, I brought up that they have uh, three different tires they're going to be using today. <clears throat> they have to start the race on the red tires, which are the soft compound. They're faster, but they don't last very long. They have a, a white, raised white letter ones, which are for wet. And I don't know, if <clears throat> I didn't see much about uh, how, uh, how many tires they get. Um, but the yellow ones are the prime tires, the ones they qualified on. They start the race on the red tires, the option soft tires, and you get two sets. So it doesn't mention white on this uh, two sets you get. You get a, uh, two sets of red and two sets of yellow, 
which are the soft and the regular uh, compounds. So, well, if it's uh, a wet weather race, th that's declared that. So that's really not going to be an option. Your option is going to be those two compounds of tires as to whether you can use them or not. Oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Um, I wanted to uh, bring up the last week's race at Darlington. Um, for those of you, us, that thought of me that Ford might never win a race this year because they hadn't shown any uh, indication they were good enough. They certainly were good enough last week. Darn near won the top two spots. Uh, and Brad Keselowski won for the first time in over 100 races personally, but for the first time since he took part ownership of Roush Fenway Keselowski Incorporated. My God, that's a lot to RFK. Um, and, uh, but boy, we were not without controversy. Uh, here you got, uh, Busher who's in position to win the thing. And, um, uh, but thank goodness that, you know, we're not just happy to fall in behind somebody. Sometimes you have to make bonsai moves and Tyler Reddick did a bonsai move to the inside and overestimated or underestimated himself. And the car washed up into Busher, put him in the wall, took both cars, uh, out of a shot to win and open the door for Keselowski to win. After the race, uh, two good friends talked it out. One was pretty pissed off at the other one, and uh, I thought it was <laughs> it was a very civil conversation for what it could have been. Because if you didn't see it there, you you they had microphones over there. You could have. It all had to do with the fact that Busher is not in the playoffs yet and uh, reddick is and but uh, reddick was smart enough to keep his helmet on during the entire conversation so i think busher seemed like more stunned when reddick admitted that he screwed up you know he goes i screwed up and i think busher was like expecting you know maybe just a little pushback but reddick was completely i Talk mean he completely took blame yeah for all of it you know and busher was almost like well, you know, I guess I'm not going to fight this guy because he knows he did wrong. So then he just came out with the old, you got to do better than that, you know, which is which is the case. And he said he does not have the sticker on the side of his car that says he's a win, and, and, and that, that's the point. But at least I mean, for Brad, that's a long time coming. I mean, how many times has he been so close now in the last two years since he's improved and elevated RFK to the point where they're at, where he, you know, he should be in victory lane? Busher's won, what, three races already since yeah. – uh, since they took over, so it, it was cool for Brad to get that win and, and punch a ticket, and I think <laughs> Bush will get one. Oh, yeah, the, his is coming real soon. Um, I thought that, and correct me here, uh, if you probably had the same thought, you guys, but um, I never heard so many cheers for Brad Keselowski since he started winning races. Uh, he has not been a popular driver, but the guy, you know, uh, nothing like a little humiliation to bring you right back down to earth and have people start looking at you in a different way. Uh, not only uh, did he buy into a losing outfit, and he did Roush uh, Fenway Racing has been really bad over the years, and uh, he bought into that to make it better, and I'll be damned, but he did it. Uh, they were cheering for him as a driver. They were cheering for him as a, a, an, an executive, and uh, I'm, I've am i <laughs> listen, since Ken Seth retired, it's been a lot easier being a fan of Brad Keselowski, especially with all those other factors. He has, um, he has really... Uh, changed, I think, the way the fans look at him. Right. And uh, he's always been a very intelligent guy. He, uh, I've always been impressed with the fact that he manages to mention the interviewer's name every interview he yeah. does. I think a lot of a, it was when like, he was winning all the time. He's a guy you didn't expect to do that. You think just uh, When you thought you got him down, he'd come back and, and he'd pull out a win. I remember a race at Talladega. I'm like, he's going to be knocked out of the playoffs. No way he can do it, and he comes out of nowhere and wins the thing. And I think as it goes along, it's more respect than anything. You kind of respect the guy because he's a racer. You know, and as much as he made you mad on the, making moves on the racetrack, you understand that, you know, deep down he's a real racer and he's doing what he's got to do. And I think now it's a, it's a sign of respect more than anything else. And if you think back, he's he's probably one of the last that didn't have any money to get into the sport. I mean, he was just, you know, his dad ran ARCA, you know, kind of a mid-major ARCA team. I mean, he, he was able to get a good look. By Junior, Junior put him in an you know Xfinity car. He won a race in one of his few <laughs> chances he had that. Brian, and he, then James Finch gave him a run. You know, and his he big won break, a race in that. Brian, his big break came when uh, Ted Musgrave took out Kelly Byers at Milwaukee because he was in that truck <laughs> the next week. That's true. Yep. Uh, yep. So I mean, he's one of the last that really came from you know really nothing and worked his way up to the top. 
you know, and the only thing he's got to do is if he can win a championship as a team owner, that would be the pinnacle of it all. He was so unpopular back in the day. I was at a uh, an Xfinity race at Phoenix, and Keselowski was leading the race late in the race, and he was passed by Kyle Busch, and the crowd cheered. Imagine that. Kyle Busch, who wins all the damn races in Xfinity. Uh, that was that was before the uh, all the Kyle Busch rules took effect. We're glad you're tuned in. Got lots of wonderful things to talk about when we come back. Take notice, race fans. There will be no racing at the Fair Park in Plymouth this weekend. Help us commemorate Memorial Day by paying respect to those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Racing resumes on Friday, May 31st with the Dairyland Classic Motorcycles. Saturday, June 1st, the Soybird Calf Ranch's Super 6 Late Model Series, Acred Auto Sprint Cars with Driver Introductions, Oosberg Automotive Grand Nationals, and Sheboygan Flooring B-Mods. All in one night. We'll see you there. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit BonafideSafe.com. Two pros and a cup of joe. Yeah, baby. The Chicago Bears are not playing any games. Caleb Williams has been named the starter. They're all set up, being the team with the number one overall pick, for him to play and play right away. You're also looking at the factors that went into getting getting Caleb Williams. You got rid of your starter. Two pros. LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, and a cup of joe. Jonas Knox. Weekday mornings, 5 to 8 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Back to LTN. Don't forget the LTN podcast available on iHeart, iTunes, and all major platforms. And also, while you're uh, downloading stuff, you might want to check out PJ's Racing Nuggets. Uh, Who did you say you had on this week? Well, still Dean Strom is the episode out there. But coming up on Tuesday, we'll have Chris Weinkoff join us. All right, and a guy that's uh, one of those up north guys that comes down and races with us at Slinger on occasion, and uh, uh, helps. Quite he's the crew chief. He crew chief on Levon Vandergeese's car. Oh, though, and he's down all the time then. So we'll see him today at Slinger. Ah, very Correct. Good. All right. Say, um, you know, we what we need in our sport is more gimmicks, don't you guys think? I mean, we just don't have <laughs> enough gimmicks. So when I say guys, PJ, I mean you know the group. I don't. I don't mean. I that. do not take offense at that. Okay, that's good. Um, well, we have ourselves a new gimmick next year uh, under the new TV contract. Um, the TNT Max streaming p- portion of the summer schedule, beginning on June twenty eighth, is going to have a new. Driver Elimination Tournament, they have not named it yet. They're probably looking for a sponsor, and they'll call it the Hunt's Pizza Elimination or some crap. But um, it's for five weeks. It will have 32 drivers that will become eligible after seeding, which will be the last three weeks of whoever has before them. Oh, my God. I tell you, there's so much to keep track of. It's a one-on-one tournament. And so... You're going to watch whatever driver your favorite driver is against one other driver and hope that he finishes the race ahead of that driver. And then he will be reseated the next week. And they will uh, be going after a $1 million prize. Am I right on that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a yeah. $1 million prize. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, a million, you, may, you might say to yourself, a million isn't what it used to be. I mean, you know, because we're not exactly adjusting our purses for inflation, uh, the million-dollar prize to win the All-Star race hasn't changed since it started. I'm thinking to myself, let's not complain too much about it. It's a million dollars. It's above and beyond any purse or contract money you were going to get from your team for running the cup schedule. Don't complain. So, um, But it's another million-dollar uh, shot for somebody to win that. So... Um, Five weeks, 32 drivers beginning June 28th of next year. Didn't the NBA try something like that this year, Brian? 
Yeah, they they had that, but again, that's teams, you know. So it's it's <clears throat> a team playing another team, and the winner got a big trophy, and and you still have to win the game. So so we had all this talk for the last what ten twelve years about we got to have more incentive on winning the race. Well, now we just went the other way with that, because you're just going head to head with another guy, so you can run thirty first, and he can run thirty fifth, and the thirty first place guy is going to move on. I I just don't know where this fits in in racing. It just to me seems kind of strange and confusing you know i mean and, so you're gonna have all these guys out there and you know they'll be racing for the win but so, i don't know that it's so gonna final, make a difference the final week is, is gonna be between two guys for a million bucks yeah, yeah. but what if they don't have a good car and then would, one's gonna finish would, 15th and one's gonna finish Brian, 35th would and you, the 15th place guy is gonna walk out of the wheel a million dollars is would, that gonna make it more would you turn a guy fans to understand would you turn a guy 50 laps in for a million bucks Mm-hmm. Do you know why this is out there? It's so that everybody will forget about the whole, the whole hullabaloo between the drivers and uh, and the the contract that's not being done. And that's why this is yeah. around. I, just, I mean, this is this is this has got TNT written all over it. I mean, they were part, you know, they were part. They're big NBA things, so they're part about the in season tournament. I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I get the the dash for cash thing that they had, you know, the noble five they had back in the day, those types of things made more sense this year. Head to head. I can just see this confusing the heck out of some average fan because I I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm, I get it. I know where they're going with it, but for a person that's really not into it, I don't know how this is going to bring any more fans in when you're giving a guy a million dollars that could possibly finish 25th in a race <laughs> at the last of it. You know, I, I don't, that to me, that just doesn't make it's sense. It's just a story within a story. The race yeah. will still become the most important thing, even though I don't know how many guys win a million for winning a race, you know? So like you said, somebody's going to win the race and win, uh, how much how much goes to a driver nowadays? We don't Nobody, even know. Remember that's not disclosed no more. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> but what do we think? About a um, couple of hundred thousand for the win? I would think yeah. I mean, you know, Seems- I'd say it's in upper halves of the hundred thousands, I would guess. All right. So it's just you pick your favorite driver and hope he beats the guy who you tell. I mean, for gambling, I could see this being a big thing. We're gonna you know, have- that, that would be something, you know, and it's they kinda do stuff like that already where you pick you know, pick this guy versus that guy. So for for the gambling side of it, I can see that being being a win. We're gonna have a guy yeah. coming out of the infield care center after uh, getting turned, and they're gonna say, he's, "I hope he chokes on that million dollars." <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it all before. It's so beautiful. Um, hey, speaking of <clears throat> next year's contract uh, that they're working on, and what we're finding out about uh, the television streaming end of it, Max Stream is going to be the one that is going to carry the in-car cameras and audio for next year. Now, it has been free up to this point. However, um, they are going to be the ones. And so will it stay free now that Max is going to? I can't imagine them donating what it's all going to take to do that. There's going to be have to be something in it for them, isn't there? So uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Also, back in the news this week, um, they announced that uh, Phoenix is going to be the site of the championship race um, next year. At the in November of 2025, will be back in Phoenix, and that the All Star race will also be back in North Wilkesboro next year. So we do know that much, even though Homestead Miami is making a play. Dan, they really want that they, race back there. They do. They're still making a play for it. Interesting thing about next year is the season's going to end on November second. Did you see that? The Phoenix weekend is like October thirty first to November second. It's a little bit earlier. We don't have the Olympics. It's still two weeks away. Yeah, that helps. And it's going to be a straight run from like Easter to the end of the year. Like no off weeks. Um, the uh, governor of North Carolina came out this week. I mentioned that they used $18 million of federal relief funds to redo the North Wilkesboro track, which is a beautiful place in a bad location. It's like in the middle of nowhere, and it's, oh, it's great. It's it's where they used to be, the, the runners, the, you know, the, the, the moonshiner. Yeah, well, whatever. It's really not, if you were going to build a beautiful racetrack like this, 
maybe we should put it in Southern California. But what the hell do I know? Um, either way, uh, they came out and gave a, an economic impact statement saying about all the jobs and tourism and all the millions of dollars it made for the state. Sometimes you say to yourself, where do those numbers exactly come from? They're dreamt up. Sure. Yeah, they were dreamt up. Well, it kind of makes it smooth over those federal relief funds for a privately held racetrack. We're glad you're tuned in. We've got some results for you, and there's a bunch of other things going on in NASCAR. We'll get to all of those right after we take a break. We'll be right back. Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Hero, the Tomasino follows. He got to the dot and tried to tug it in. He scored! Oh, yeah! After dropping game one of the Central Division Finals Wednesday night, the Milwaukee Admirals will host Grand Rapids in game two Monday. Locked in front off his own man. The rebound, he scores! Three game coverage starts at 6.30, face off at 7. I heart radio! And now the LTN Hour presents Turn on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. Busy, busy week of dirt racing. We'll go back to Monday, Kokomo, Indiana, the High Limit Sprint Car Series. Tyler Courtney got the win. Tuesday night, Beaver Dam finally had some beautiful weather, and they got their event in. The Modifieds went to Cole Sarneski. Stock cars went to Brandon Schmidt. Also Tuesday night in Accord, New York, the Short Track Super Series Big Block Modifieds. Truck Series regular Stuart Friesen grabbed the win. Thursday night in Dundee, New York, the Outlaw Speedway for the High Limit Sprint Car Series. Brad Sweet got the win. Conquette, Ohio, Raceway 7 for the World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Models. Chris Smokey Madden picked the win Thursday. Friday night, Chilton Gravity Park in the Modifieds was Steve Schneider. Stock Cars was Mitch Meyer. Grand Nationals was Aaron Streblo. Seymour, the Outagamie County Speedway in the Modifieds went to Marcus Yari. Stock Cars went to Josh Morotska. Morotsky? Well, that's a name I've not seen before. Luxembourg, Stock Cars went to Tyler Wilson in the Mods, Benji Lacrosse. Jim Falls, Wisconsin, the Eagle Valley Speedway Friday night. USRA Limited Lates went to Cade Nelson. The Modifieds, Caden Blauser. Out in Menominee, the Red Cedar Raceway and the Wissota Late Models went to Chad Mater. And the Modifieds went to Mike Anderson. Fountain City, the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. USRA Modifieds went to Dan Ebert. And the Limited Lates went to Brad Waits. Darlington, Wisconsin, the Lafayette County Speedway for the Limited Lates. Jason Robbins. Modifieds, Jed Freeberger. Down in Kankakee, Illinois, the Mars Dirt Car Series. Dylan McCowan got the win. Indianapolis, Indiana, the Circle City Raceway. 10000 to win for the Super Lates. Ricky Thornton Jr. continued his winning ways. Belleville, Kansas, Friday night. USAC Midgets went to Cannon McIntosh. Vernon, New York, Utica Rome Speedway for the High Limit Sprint Cars. Rico Abreu got the win. Etica, Ohio, Friday night for the World of Outlaw and Austin Engineering Sprint Car Series. Michael Buddy Kofoid got the win. Bill Baylock, third in that World of Outlaw feature, so big night for him. Last night at Plymouth, the IRA Sprint Cars. Blake Nemi got the win, and the wingless sprints went to Tate Hensley. That was his first ever win. Francis Crick, the 141 Speedway, and the Modifieds, Cole Sarneski. Stock cars went to Jesse Cron, and the Grand Nationals went to Nick Schumacher. Wilmot and the Modifieds, Joel Crowbridge with the win. The 604 wing sprints went to Tommy Sexton. Shano and the late models, Troy Springmore, and the Modifieds, Marcus Yari. That's two for him on the weekend. And the stock cars, Trent Nolan. Sturgeon Bay opened up their season up at the Hill Raceway. The IMCA stock car win 
Richmond went to Brent Wenzel. New Richmond, Wisconsin at Cedar Lake in the late models. Sammy Mars got the win. Caden Blouser in the modifieds. That's two for him on the weekend. And the USRA Limited Lates went to Matt Larson. Rice Lake in the Wissota Mods. Kevin Buzzy Adams. Belleville, Kansas. The USAC Silver Crown Series was there. And Kaylee Bryson got a win, the first female to win in the USAC Silver Crown Series. So congratulations to her. The Midgets ran on the little quarter mile. Dason Persley got the win. Marion Center, Pennsylvania for the World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Models. I was able to see this, watch this race online last night. $15,000 to win. Chris Madden drove from 22nd to the win, and I wow. believe there's only one caution flag to assist him in it. So that was an impressive race to see. And finally, in Hartford, Ohio, the Sharon Speedway for the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars, David Gravel continued his winning ways, picking up the win there last night, and that is everything from a very busy week at dirt track racing. On the pavement side of things, the Cars Tour got rained out on Wednesday at North Wilkesboro Speedway. I don't know if that race will ever be run again. Uh, Friday night, Golden Sands Speedway. They had the All-Star Challenge going with Pro Late Models. They had like a futures race. Alan Borntrigger was your winner of that. And then the All-Star Challenge winner was Kendrick Cryer. At Grundy County Speedway, Rich Bickle back from retirement in Super Late Model Action. (laughs) Yeah. Fast time and the feature win at Grundy County Speedway for Rich Bickle. Congrats to him. It was uh, kind of the theme, I think, for the weekend, getting fast time and feature wins. At Thomas Sparta Speedway, the uh, Central Wisconsin Racing Association had a set of double features. Corey Jankowski, clean sweep with the fast time and picking up both feature wins. At Madison Speedway, light models in action for double features. Zach Riddle swept both of them. Midwest Dash Series, double features. Carter Stark swept both of those as well. And then last night at Dell's Raceway Park, Mike Litchfield picked up the late model win. Justin Okrulika. Okrulika. Thank you. He was your modified winner. At Lacrosse Speedway in the NASCAR late models, Ryan Kamish was the winner. Jefferson Speedway, Dale Nottestead picked up the win. State Park Speedway last night, they had the super late models in action. Justin Mondike, fast time and the feature win with Toby's Lucky French Fry as well. Midwest Truck Series, Brandon Reichenberger was the winner up at Wausau as well. And then the Arkham Menards East was at Flat Rock Speedway in Michigan. And Connor Zelich was the winner. And that's a wrap on pavement. You know, I think Bickle is getting all racy. Here he is, 62 years old, just turned 62. He's getting married for the first time in his life at the end of July. And he thought, well, you know, why not? He's feeling pretty spunky these days, I guess. So he goes out, <laughs> sets fast time, and wins. That That's just amazing. It blows me away. Not that I didn't what? think he could do it, just the fact that he did it. One other quick note today, I was told to pass along, if you're in the central Wisconsin area, today is the Dick Trickle picnic up in uh, Rudolph, Wisconsin, from 12 to 5. So it's supposed to be going to be some racers there, and uh, some of Dick's kids will be there. So a lot of fun if you're in the central Wisconsin area. Is that going to be over at the uh, memorial? Yeah, at his park, correct. At the park, okay. Yeah, I was there once. A very cool place. If you've never seen it, you kind of have to go there once in your life. Hey, uh, guys, <clears throat> there was an interesting tidbit came up this week. Uh, there is a, a a podcast called Door Bumper Clear, and it's really good if you've never seen it. Um, one of the guys on there is TJ Majors. What it is is three spotters, okay, and they're not afraid to talk about things that they heard and that they know. But TJ Majors is the, is the spotter for Brad Keselowski, and he's one of the guys on this Door Bumper Clear. And he said, interestingly enough, that, um, you know, right now, this isn't what he said yet, uh, that, you know, we don't really know what's happening with um, Stuart Haas racing. They look as though something is going to happen. Is it one? Dan seems to think it could be two charters. Uh, there's a word out there that they could uh, completely merge with another outfit and be done with uh, Stuart Haas. Whatever happens, according to TJ May, uh, Majors, Ford wants to keep Chase Briscoe. Uh, he's their uh, he's their guy, their up and coming superstar, and he brought up two different possibilities for Chase Briscoe to go to. First one is the number twenty one car. Well, you know we don't have to go into how bad Harrison Burton has been. Um, I don't know. Chase Briscoe does have some sponsorship behind him. Mahindra but- Tractors. 
Yeah, Mahindra. And uh, isn't there another one, that, that guy you met on the strip, Dan, in Vegas? Yeah, that was like uh, High Limit. Oh, that was the uh, High Point University, High Point right? University. That was uh, High Point. Yeah, High Point. Yeah, but those are some sponsors he does have that he could bring along. But, you know, as far as uh, Harrison Burton, other than dear old dad, I don't know exactly um, who's financing that deal over there. Well, that was one of the possibilities of the 21 car. The other one is possibly a new Roush Fenway Keselowski car. Remember when it used to be four charters, uh, six, 16, the 17? Six, which one am I missing? They're running the 60. Uh, they ran the 60 at Daytona. It's going to run again at the road course. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> that would be another p- potential landing spot for Chase Briscoe in the event something happens to the deal that it is now. So um, the, the rumor, that's the greatest rumor of the week as far as I'm concerned. We're glad you tuned in. We're going to come back and got some other things to talk about right after these. Take notice, race fans, there will be no racing at the Fair Park in Plymouth this weekend. Help us commemorate Memorial Day by paying respect to those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Racing resumes on Friday, May 31st with the Dairyland Classic Motorcycles. Saturday, June 1st, the Soybird Calf Ranch's Super 6 Late Model Series, Acride Auto Sprint Cars with Driver Introductions, Oosberg Automotive Grand Nationals, and Sheboygan Flooring B-Mods. All in one night. We'll see you there. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit BonafideSafe.com. Hero, but Tomasino follows. He got to the dot and tried to tuck it in. He scored! Oh, yeah! After dropping game one of the Central Division Finals Wednesday night, the Milwaukee Admirals will host Grand Rapids in game two Monday. Locked in front off his own man. The rebound, they score! Three game coverage starts at 6.30. Face off at 7. I heart radio! Another uh, rumor out there, uh, there are some that are floating around, is that Colleg Racing and Trackhouse Racing are rumored to be merging. I can't imagine how many, I'm not, I don't keep track of all these, Dan. How many charters do they have between them? There's two for Trackhouse, Two for Trackhouse, two two for for Colleague, and Trackhouse needs one because they're going to have to do something with Zane Smith next year. You know, uh, uh, McDowell's taking that ride for Spire. They've been loaning him out, so they're going to need one somewhere. They Uh, do work together a lot. You know, yeah. But... SVG drove a, a Trackhouse car, and now he's driving Colleague's Xfinity car. Mm, that's right. Uh, Co- uh, Chris Rice, who is the guy at Colleague, right, Dan? He's a president of Colleague. Uh, right. He's the one that said it's not going to happen, but it did come out this week um, that uh, that is what the what the issue was. You know, this has been fun this week to keep an eye on Kyle Larson. It's always fun to watch the guy race, but boy, we're going to have some Kyle. If you love Kyle Larson, you're going to love watching him this week. Uh, Qualifying yesterday. Of course, I don't follow how that's all works, Brian, but he, he qualified the sixth yesterday for the 500. Yep. They do a four lap average there. So that, that means, you know, it's not just, you know, get all your kahunas and make one lap. You got to do four laps there and they take the average of those four laps and he qualified sixth yesterday, but that's not where he's not. He's not done there now. So now today they take the top 12 and they, they, they do another four lap average and that's from two Oh five to to three Oh five today, our uh, Wisconsin time. And then after that, they take the top six and those six will run for the pole. And that is uh, this afternoon from four twenty five to four fifty five. So if he's able to get his car into the fast six with, you know, if his car was six yesterday, there's a good chance he should be as fast today. But it's all about four laps. So you have to be on it for four laps, and and you can't miss a mark because if you screw up one lap, it ruins your whole average. That's what makes this qualifying the ultimate test of how good, how fast you can really be on that track. I watched the uh, in-car on him. My God, they just put it to the floor and turn left, right? And it's a, it's a, it's a delicate, a delicate procedure there of how much downforce you have on the car because the more downforce you put on any car the slower you go so you want to trim that thing out as much as you can because it's like an inverted airplane 
But then if you take too much off, you snap loose and you wreck. And a couple guys wrecked. I think Renus, Renus VK had a pretty hellacious wreck yesterday, too. So it's it's a fine line of how well you can hang on to that thing without getting loose. It's it's the engineering involved in those Indy cars at that track going 230. I mean, at one point, a trap speed for Kyle Larson was over 240 miles an hour going into a corner yesterday. Just think yeah. about that. Yeah, it's Flat. No banking to really hold you in either. No. I know it's crazy. Okay, so let's just say he makes it into the final six, or let's just say he makes it close to pole. Um, there's going to be a jet revving its engines right nearby, I'm guessing, that's going to take him quickly to North Wilkesboro. I don't know the nearest airport. Um, I did find out this week from uh, the world's greatest plumber, Steve Litchfield, that there is a... Uh, a, a, a helicopter pad off the back stretch that they're going to be bringing them in on. And um, so, you know, wherever they're going to land this jet, uh, they're going to have to get them, uh, the helicopter over there, and then get them to the track yeah, quickly. They'll, they'll probably but land no at, matter what happens, right, he starts in the back? Right, yeah, they'll yes. probably land at Concord, and that's probably the closest airport. Same with next week. That's the big question next week. Say he wins the Indy 500. You know, what <laughs> if that happens? Is he going to be drinking the milk and going? And I, I hope that they're smart enough in Charlotte to hold that start of that race for to do it because winning the double is motorsports immortality. It will, I mean, that's the greatest oh, accomplishment absolutely. ever. And if you got a shot to do it, I hope everybody makes it, you know, does what needs to be done to make sure it has a shot at it. Don't get on anybody's high horse. Let's just relish the moment of the history that we might be seeing, you know? So we got to wait another hour. Big deal. It rains all the time. We wait a lot, you know? <laughs> and, I, I, you know, I hope these networks don't get goofy about it either because, you know, Fox is doing this and NBC does that. You know, let's just if, if this moment is able to come upon us, let's enjoy it and embrace every minute of it. So he comes today. Uh, he'll get there kind of late, but he should make it on time. Um, and he no matter what happens, uh, the uh, open, the two guys that move from the open, plus the, the guy that advances from the fan vote are all going to start ahead of Kyle Larson, correct? I believe so, because it's a driver change. Yeah, that makes sense. So, oh, funny. Wait, this was uh, an interest. Boy, there was a lot of cameras on Kevin Harvick this week. Huh? <laughs> they, they watched his every move in that five car. Good stuff. Great to I watch. thought it was interesting. Think about Larson said... now going from a 240-mile-an-hour Indy car onto the short track at North Wilkesboro. I mean, it's going to feel like he's standing still. <laughs> And if anybody can do it, I mean, I'm thinking back to the days of A.J. Foyt and uh, the newer version of Foyt, Tony Stewart. Um, and now we're looking at Kyle Larson, a young guy who uh, wins no matter where he goes and what he drives. And uh, if you don't think he's got a shot to win the 500, I think you ought to look a little closer at it. He's... But, Dan, how do we go from getting milk poured over your head to Charlotte. I don't know. I mean, you got to take a shower in between there or are you going to stink out of bed? Got to be a shower involved or that's going to stink to high heaven. That would be gross. Yes. Well, little things to think about. Get that milk away from me. No, you can't get that milk away. It's the deal. Drink some then. Oh, they'll do that anyway. All right, so quick, quick shower. But don't they give you fluids then on the plane? That's yeah, what they did for You're going to have uh, to Kurt. because... Yeah, and Stewart as well. I mean, it's it's a rough deal. 1,100 miles and, and that kind of schedule is tough to do. And the 600 at, at the end of the race is going to get where it's going to really get tough. But they got a plan in place. I mean, Stewart showed how you can do it. Kurt Busch did it. Stewart did the best because he's the one that's got the best results. I think a sixth at Indy and a third or fourth at, at Charlotte. So, And he was one lap. Of all the laps completed, he only missed one. So I think that's what you're shooting for as far as performance-wise. Yeah, that's that's as good as it can get. It's a, still a long shot for him to do it. I don't know what the odds are. I would say 75 to 1 myself because it is so hard. Think Fine, of the Indy last 500 is a crap shoot, you know. Yeah, it is. Cars got to survive. Think, think of the last 50 laps of running 1100 miles and now you have to pass cars and it's probably hot and humid and <laughs> it's not easy and that's why it's fun to watch. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't turned on the race at North Wilkesboro, you might want to do it. The trucks are racing uh, and getting towards the end of stage two. We've still got a, a ways to go on that one. Hey, here's something we'd like you to remember. Real race cars have doors, even if they do climb in through the windows. Let's Talk NASCAR is produced, directed, and today engineered by our own dangerous Dan Argett. And we'll see you at Slinger Speedway tonight, Dan, and everybody else. See you at Slinger. 
This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash ltnradionetwork. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.